These farmers have gathered at a local land care field day in the high country of New South Wales to learn how Aboriginal people used fire to manage the land. The event's being hosted by Charlie Massey on his family farm, in a landscape he says is in serious trouble. What we're dealing with now is a degraded ecosystem and we have to substitute what was once natural capital with fertilisers and now chemicals. And all that's doing is further downgrading the landscape function. So we're starting to hit the wall all over Australia. Charlie Massey's at the forefront of a movement known as regenerative farming, and he's written extensively on new approaches to Australian agriculture. We're talking about a continent that is adapted to fire. 70% or so of our species rely on fire for germination and all the rest of it. Once I started to look, I realised that there was a people who've been here 50,000 years and who are using fire as a management tool. And it just seems logical in what I've seen um, as we're trying to reclaim land which has lost a lot of its biodiversity, that we use fire to recruit uh, vegetation that we've lost and to change some of the landscape functions. That change, he says, means people need to learn new land management techniques from Aboriginal people like Rod Mason. It's very important for non-Indigenous people because uh, they're the new landowners now. We'd like them to apply the same management techniques as our ancestors did, our forebears did. The technique we're using today is uh, slow spot burn, and then after the slow spot burn, then we use wind to join it up with mosaic burning. So it then becomes patch burning to mosaic burning, and we join the patches up. This is a low intensity fire. You're not dangerous up there now, ahead of us. See, so let's work back. Nikki Tors from Greening Australia will study the outcomes of the burn. There'll probably be a good response in terms of growth, a lot of fresh growth after the burn. The, um, the fire itself may have triggered some germination of plants that, that weren't, uh, weren't evident here before and possibly some regeneration seedlings or um, some new growth on some of the trees as well. For these farmers, the focus is on how to introduce these techniques into their day-to-day -day farm management practices. I'm still working through how I'm going to uh, practice it, but the evidence seems to be late in an afternoon, this time of year, autumn, just poke out and burn an acre or two or half an acre and just start creating those mosaic patches and uh, that's how you get diversity in, in various different forms. With these farmers adopting Aboriginal land management techniques, it also means that prejudices and barriers between the two communities are breaking down. It's a tragedy that's taken two centuries that we're starting at last to think a bit differently, get over those old prejudices that the colonial world had towards Indigenous people, um, and to acknowledge that um, there's a hugely valid knowledge here. The response today is quite surprising. We didn't advertise and there's 50 odd people turned up, so people are starting to think about it. I'd really like them to uh, learn these traditional skills, embrace them and use them on their properties because, I mean, actually live this uh, style of land management, live it. Bill Brown, ABC News, Babundra.